Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my predictions for the A Level Maths 9709 course and the paper one, which is on the 11th of October. And I've been going through the last 17 papers, so even more papers than last time, to make sure you get the very best predictions for the paper. So let's get started. First of all, we have at 76% here, transformations of graphs. So again, in that almost certain category. And this can vary in terms of the style of question. I put one for you here. This is quite common here, where you need to work out P, Q, and R from a trigonometric function. That can happen quite often sometimes they'll outline the actual transformations they want you to do and then what the function will be afterwards so there's a few different ways that they can answer that particular question on to functions here at 82 percent also very very popular going to put a typical question here using composite functions inverse functions but something a little bit more of an upgrade from igcse and if you want to review your work on this then do check out the video above on to the binomial expansion at 94%. So we can pretty much say that this is going to be certain to appear in some way. I'll put a more difficult question up on here. So question eight. So being aware of how to work with two brackets as well as the binomial expansion as well is a very important skill. Again, if you want to review your work on this, then do check out the video above as well. And on to the certain category. And the first one here is radian measure. Again, similar to the ad maths, it's a very, very popular topic. Here's an example question here for you. Again, making sure you can work with areas and arcs and using the r theta and half r squared theta formulae is very, very important for this particular paper. Equations of circles, and this is one big difference between ad maths and the A-level maths paper one. So you need to make sure you're very familiar with the equation for a standard circle at zero, zero, but also the transformations and shifts you can have with that. It can often include some IGCSE basic knowledge as well with perpendicular bisectors. So don't forget, ordinary coordinate geometry is also tested. But equations of circles, again, this can vary where it is on the paper, but it's a very important topic. Sequence and series at 124%, so it comes up more than once every single paper. Again, this is an example here of question two. Remember this paper rightly, there was also a question four, also on sequence and series. You may know this as progressions. Again, uh, there's different terminology that can be used for this, but working with the sum formula, both for arithmetic and geometric, working with the sum to infinity is also very important too. On to trig identities and equations. Again, no surprise that this does turn up, usually towards the middle of the paper, so not the easiest questions, but not the hardest questions either. And usually this is a very standard question here where you need to prove an identity and then use that to solve a trigonometric equation. So making sure you're familiar with that kind of question will help you get those top grades. And on to quadratics, there's not a surprise here, at a whopping 153%, so it comes up a lot on this paper. Again, can vary in terms of what they test you on. This is a very standard question here, where they need to find no real roots, or a repeated root, or two real roots. That use of the discriminant is a very, very important topic. Again, if you want to review your work on quadratics, check out the video above. And of course, a video like this is going to include calculus a lot. And of course, integration and then differentiation later is no exception. Here we're at 171%. So particularly if you're aiming for those top grades, so those A and A star grades, this is really, really important to make sure you have a good knowledge of. Now, this is towards the end of the paper. This is kind of standard here where they give you a derivative and you have to work out the equation of the curve using some initial conditions here as well. And of course, differentiation appears everywhere across the paper. Again, this is question 11, so the very last question on this particular paper, where they get you to use your differentiation knowledge to find the minimum point. Again, this could also appear in an integration question where you work with tangents and normals to then find an area under the curve. So you can see differentiation, integration, if there's a particular topic to cover in lots of detail, these are the topics to cover. And if you want to make sure you're up to scratch on all things differentiation, then check out the video above. 
So to summarize what we've looked at so far, again, you can see a lot of topics here are certain to appear on the particular paper. Notice things like, and this has been mentioned in my comments, volume of revolutions, even at 35% here. I know a few of you have had issues with that kind of question. So be aware there are some topics that can appear that you may be surprised. Oh, is that in the course? Well, yep, you are expected to do volumes of revolution as well. And a little bonus for you here as well. So you can see the spreadsheet here. Again, I've gone back through those 17 papers outlining every single topic that's appeared and every single question and sometimes even sub question here as well. Again, you can see a good summary of all the information you need to know for paper one. And if you really want to have some last minute revision before your exam on the 11th of October, going through all of A-level maths paper one, then check out the video right in front of you because I spend two hours going through the top 10 topics I've just been discussing and making sure you can do those standard questions and some of the more difficult questions on the paper as well.